Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel at the Anchor Desk with my partner, Clark Kellogg, bringing you the 2K Sports NCAA Selection Show. We're all set to show you the seedings and pairings, so get out your bracket sheet, get those pencils ready. Here are the basics. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatically given to conference champions. The tournament committee hands out the remaining 34 bids on an at-large basis. An opening round game will take place on Tuesday night to narrow the field to 64 teams. But before we unveil the brackets for this season, here's a look at the final top 25 media poll of the season. There are a couple of major changes in the rankings as March Madness approaches. The Fordham Rams jumped all the way from the number 21 spot to number 14. They're peaking at just the right time, Greg. This is exactly the way you want to be playing going into the tournament. Also, a new team has fought its way into the top 25. The Duke Blue Devils break into the poll as the number 21 team. Now let's take a look at the NCAA tournament bubble and see which teams are sitting at home with their fingers crossed, hoping to see their name in the brackets. There are a lot of worthy candidates among these 10 teams, Clark. Which of these bubble teams stands out to you right now? Temple has had some great games and some forgettable ones, too. Its future comes down to which games the committee is willing to overlook. And we have a few more teams in similar position, right, Clark? Tulsa should be considered among the best of the major conference teams not holding an automatic bid. But there are plenty of non-power conference teams knocking on the door that may prevent them from getting an invitation. I'm sure it's been a long week for those teams, but the wait's almost over. The NCAA Selection Committee has finished its meeting, and we're ready to unveil the top four seeds in this year's tournament. The Memphis Tigers are the top overall seed, and they will play in the East Regional. They begin the tournament as the dominant team in college basketball. They've been ranked number one in the media poll for the past five weeks. We'll soon find out if they can live up to their billing. On to the second number one seed, who will play in the South Regional. The North Carolina Tar Heels are seeking their fifth NCAA championship in school history. The UCLA Bruins are our third number one seed, and they'll play in the Midwest Regional. They're back in the tournament again, and no doubt they'll be feeding off the experience of last year's appearance as they try to get to the Final Four this year. And finally, our fourth number one seed will play in the West Regional. The Louisville Cardinals are in the tournament field as a number one seed for the first time in the history of their program. Now, here's how the brackets shape up based on where the number one seeds have been assigned. In one national semifinal game, the winner of the East Regional will play the winner of the South Regional in the other semifinal game. The winner of the Midwest Regional will play the winner of the West Regional. Those games will be played on Saturday, April 5th. Then it'll be on to the national championship game on Monday night, April 7th. Any surprises in there for you, Clark? Well, when you see the selection committee deviate from the top four teams in the media poll, it's a little surprising. They've opened themselves up to some criticism with these picks. So with the number one seeds out of the way, it's finally time to tackle the rest of the brackets. First up, we take a look at the East Regional. The Memphis Tigers are the top seed, finishing at 30 and 4. They were winners of the regular season championship in Conference USA. They will take on the winner of the opening round play-in game between UC Riverside with 12 wins. And, and now the number eight seed, the St. Mary's Gales, come into the tournament first in their conference during the regular season and were winners of their conference tournament. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Akron Zips, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 23 and seven. Stanford comes in as the number five seed, finishing at 24 and eight. And they will take on the 12th seed from the Metro Atlantic Conference, the Ryder Bronx with 21 wins. Clemson enters the field as the number four seed from the ACC. This will be their eighth appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the Southern Illinois Saluki. Finished the season with 19 wins. The Clemson Tigers are going to provide serious matchup problems to any team that doesn't have depth and defensive ability at both guard spots. They have outstanding backcourt play at both ends of the court. It's the main reason they've made it this far, and they're going to have to maintain that form if they want to do some damage in this tournament. The Arizona Wildcats are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed, the New Mexico Lobos, with 23 wins. Vanderbilt comes in as the number three seed, finishing at 25 and seven. Western Kentucky comes in to face them at number 14 with 17 wins in the tournament championship of the Sun Belt Conference. Our number seven seed is from the Big 12. The Texas Longhorn were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. 
they are going to play the number 10 seed, the UC Irvine Anteaters, who finished second in their conference tournament, finishing at 24 and 6. Next up is the number two seed. The Minnesota Golden Gophers are the regular season champion from the Big Ten. They'll be going up against the number 15 seed, the Montana Grizzlies, with 19 wins. This will be their eighth appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. Looking into the future a little bit, this bracket looks poised for a titanic matchup in the regional final. If the top two seeds can take care of business in the first three rounds, we have the possibility of a classic Elite Eight meeting. Next up, we'll take a look at the South Regional. The North Carolina Tar Heels are the top seed, finishing at 27 and 7. They were winners of the regular season championship in the ACC. They'll take on the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders, the number 16 ranked team. This will be their second appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Pittsburgh comes in as the number 8 seed, finishing at 22 and 11. Indiana comes in to face them at number 9 with 21 wins and a chance to prove they're right where they belong among the top 65 teams in the nation. Syracuse enters the field as the number 5 seed from the Big East. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for a school that's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the Wagner Seahawks. Finished the season with 25 wins. The Syracuse Orange are one of those teams that's hard to put a finger on. They've got a terrific squad, but they depend on a lot of young players, and that lack of experience can be a big factor. Sometimes young guys play a lot looser than the veterans, but it's always a tough call. They really could go either way on you. Duke comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 21 and 12. And they'll take on the 13th seed from the SEC, the Florida Gators, with 17 wins. And now the number six seed, the Kansas State Wildcats, come into the tournament first in their conference during the regular season and finish second in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Oregon Ducks, who were third in their conference, finishing at 19 and 12. The Fordham Rams are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Western Michigan Broncos, with 19 wins. Next up is the number seven seed. The Houston Cougars are the conference tournament champions from Conference USA. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the UNLV Runnin' Rebels, with 21 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. Our number two seed is from the Big 12. The Kansas Jayhawks were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Hawaii Warriors, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 17 and 14. This bracket has the potential to give us a sensational matchup in the regional final if everything goes according to form and the top two seeds can survive the early rounds. On to our third bracket of the day. Let's take a look at the Midwest Regional. The UCLA Bruins are the top seed, finishing at 26 and 7. They won both the regular season and conference tournament titles in the Pac-10. They'll take on the Vermont Catamounts, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their fourth appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Our number 8 seed is from the Big East. The Connecticut Huskies were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the Big Dance. They're going to play the number 9 seed, the St. Joseph's Hawks, who were third in their conference, finishing at 21 and 9. The Rhode Island Rams are in as the number 5 seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed, the Butler Bulldogs, with 23 wins. Texas A&M enters the field as the number four seed from the Big 12. This is their ninth appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed. The Yale Bulldogs finished the season with 17 wins. The Texas A&M Aggies do the one thing that all great teams absolutely must do, and that's play tremendous team defense. These guys have been shutting down opponents all year with a combination of speed, intelligence, and sheer determination. There have been NCAA championship teams of all shapes and sizes, but all of them played good, strong defense. Oklahoma comes in as the number six seed, finishing at 23 and nine. And they take on the 11th seed from Conference USA, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, with 20 wins. And now the number three seed, the Kentucky Wildcats, come into the tournament after finishing second in their conference during the regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 9. 
Next up is the number seven seed. The Miami Hurricane have established themselves as one of the best teams from the ACC. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Washington State Cougars, with 20 wins. This is their sixth appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Florida State comes in as the number two seed, finishing at 26 and seven. UNC Greensboro comes in to face them at number 15 with 19 wins in the tournament championship of the Southern Conference. It's the first question every selection Sunday, which is the toughest bracket? Well, this bracket looks to me like it wins that prize this year. Not only are the top seeds strong, the lower seeds can be dangerous as well. And finally, let's have a look at the West Regional. The Louisville Cardinals are the top seed, finishing at 26 and 7. They were winners of the regular season championship in the Big East. They'll take on the Texas Southern Tigers, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their first appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. Next up is the number eight seed, the Gonzaga Bulldogs have established themselves as one of the best teams from the West Coast Conference. They'll be going up against the number nine seed, the Virginia Commonwealth Rams. With 21 wins, this is their ninth appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. Virginia comes in as the number five seed, finishing at 23 and seven. And they will take on the 12th seed from the Big East, the Georgetown Hoyas, with 19 wins. Michigan State comes in as the number four seed, finishing at 25 and eight. Lipscomb comes in to face them at number 13 with 21 wins in the tournament championship of the Atlantic Sun Conference. Our number six seed is from the SEC. The Auburn Tigers were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the George Mason Patriots, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and 10. The Arkansas Razorbacks are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Florida A&M Rattlers, with 21 wins. And now the number seven seed, the Providence Friar, come into the tournament fifth in their conference during the regular season and were quarter finalists in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Governors of Austin P, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 25 and eight. Tennessee enters the field as the number two seed from the SEC. This marks their 16th appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 15 seed. The Midshipmen of Navy finished the season with 18 wins. The Tennessee Volunteers are a team I love watching play. They've been one of the highest scoring teams in the country and I don't see any reason for them to slow down during the tournament. If they can dictate the tempo of a game and force the other team to run with them, they are very hard to deal with. I wouldn't put it past these guys to make a run this year. Some of the lower seeds in this bracket have the ability to not only compete with the high seeds, but win a few games. The potential for a Cinderella or two in this bracket is definitely there. Clark, give us your take on the tournament's top 16 seeds. There are no real off-the-wall picks that jump out at me. These 16 teams are all pretty deserving. Let's give the committee some props this year. Florida State is a little bit of a paper lion in my opinion, Greg. They are not a team that I think can do any serious damage in this competition. I just don't see it happening. Now let's see how the conference representation fares. The SEC gets six teams. The ACC with six. Six out of the Big East. The Big 12 gets five teams. What a down year for the non-power conferences. We're used to seeing at least one of those conferences compete on the level of the power conferences, but not this year. And let's not forget the teams out of the Big West. For a small conference, they competed at a very high level this year. Those teams could be the place to look if you're trying to find a Cinderella story in the tournament. I'm surprised there were so few bids for the teams in the Mountain West Conference. It was an especially disappointing year for that conference. Usually you can count on a few of the nation's elite teams coming out of there, but this was a season where very few of those teams could maintain any type of positive momentum. Here's the list of the teams that were on the bubble heading into Selection Sunday. So partner, which of those invitees should be sending the selection committee a thank you card? UC Irvine did themselves a big favor with their hot finish. They were really on a roll and the committee would much rather hand out bids to teams that are playing well now, not the ones that were hot in December. While those teams are celebrating getting into the tournament, let's take a look at the other teams who were on the short end of the stick. North Carolina State just didn't do enough in the latter part of the season to warrant that bid. It's really too bad because I like a lot of the things they bring to the table, but I have no doubt they'll be back next year. All right, Clark, now that we know all the teams and matchups, time to get the tournament underway and let the madness take over. Greg, let's throw the ball up right now. I can't wait to get started. I hope this is an NCAA tournament that gives a lot of those special moments 
that stay with us for years to come. For my partner Clark Kellogg and for all of us here in the 2K Sports Studios, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us on the NCAA Selection Show, brought to you by State Farm, the number one auto insurer. Enjoy all the excitement of the NCAA 